Okay, looks like we are live in the Facebook group. And so today what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you this site right here. It's a new thing that uh, Tony and, uh, why am I drawing a name, uh, Dean. Dean are doing one of their mastery type things that they're doing. They're going to have a free thing next week. And um, so this was built on ClickFunnels. So I wanted to show you a couple things on here because I was looking at it, doing a little bit of inspecting. And a typical thing that I find on here, which I find on a different site that I'll show you in a second that I hacked uh, last week and made some drastic improvements to, is a resizing issue. So if you look down here in my bottom right-hand corner, I got the numbers of how big the screen is. And so right about here, right there, we're at 1,400. And as soon as we get much below that, you're going to see on the left-hand side here, poor old Russell, he's gone. Matthew McConaughey's getting cut off. And so, um, well, McConaughey more than Russell even. And what you see on the right, everything starts breaking. And by the time you get down to the size of an iPad right here, you got text over the image. And so what I'll probably do sometime in the next uh, couple of weeks is do a full-blown hack of, you know, the money part of the page, the top part of the page here, and show how to fix these things so they don't break because you're also seeing here what is breaking is the text is breaking down to a second line. You get this here, register for free box popping out because it went to two lines of text and all these things can be fixed with just a couple of simple little lines of CSS. And I'll prove that to you over here in that, let me see here, where's the original? Here is the ClickFunnels original. Again, this is built on ClickFunnels. This is for their certification program. And if you watch here, again, look at the bug in the bottom right-hand corner. When you get down to just 1,400 pixels, so this is gonna be most laptops. Uh, a lot of them certainly are only up to 14, 1,600 pixels you're going to get this and it's broken. But the problem is even before that, you look at the top line up here, the navigation, and it runs all the way off the screen. So when we go small, the word login comes back into the page, but it's off the page when you're bigger than, let me see here about, let's just call it 1600, the uh, login starts to disappear. So again, if your max width on your screen is only like 1400 or if you're not on an iPad, it's going to look pretty bad because if we keep bringing this down and then you see here the image starts shrinking the text on the left keeps getting taller and taller and we're not down to ipad now now here we're finally down to ipad size and so what i did with this one was i came in and i just said okay um let's make it so that things will resize or move properly based upon the viewport width now one thing i could do is i could probably move that image over a little bit um, but, um, you know, I wasn't looking for perfection here. I was looking for, okay, how the heck can I do this? And so let's do this here. But now one thing you're going to notice with theirs, the login comes all the way out to basically the edge of this laptop. Whereas mine, I kept tucked inside here more with the width of his shoulder. And so you'll watch why that's important here, because as we start off here and we get smaller and smaller, what you're going to see is the people on the right, the image does not resize. What it does is it actually moves over to the right-hand side. So it goes partially off the screen until you get right about, right in here somewhere is where, yeah, right about there, right when it uh, also starts to break a little bit, um, you get that where the image stops moving off the side and you get to see the whole thing. And as you keep getting down a little bit smaller and a little bit smaller, notice what's happening. The text is not covering them up. The buttons are not covering up the image. And in fact, it is breaking. And if you notice here, look at the blue, it's actually resizing itself. And so that's what really should be done on a lot of sites is a couple lines of CSS to make that look and work much better. So here we are at, well, let's just, let's do it here at 1,024. So come on, let's get down there. So here's 1,024 on my version of it. And here's 1,024 on the ClickFunnels version of it. So again, a little bit of time, a little bit of thought, a couple lines of CSS, and you can make this stuff look good. But that wasn't what I really wanted to show you today. It was actually a hack I started looking at earlier only because I saw something on this page that I've seen a couple times recently, 
And I thought, okay, I like that, except I don't like it. I don't like the way it looks. And what it is is this right here. And let me just highlight the whole thing so you can see it. So as I highlighted that, um, you see the darker blue area now. When I uh, click away, it's going to turn into a lighter greenish blue area because that is the entirety of that headline element right there. And it's underlined, and so therefore it is at an inline block level is where it's at, or inline level technically, not even unnecessarily block at this point. So it is inline, but one of the things I really don't like about it is that underneath, you can see here underneath the actual underline where I got the middle of my cursor right there, that is the underline, but below there, there's about an equal amount, maybe about five pixels of the background color showing below it. And I just like, you know, I, I've seen that before. I've never liked that look. And then especially when you come down here to the bottom, you're going to see, where the heck is it? Did I go past it? Yeah, you're going to see here with the one trillion dollars how that one trillion is broken up and i was working on two hacks i only got one done uh before i wanted to get this live so i can get on to some other work this afternoon so let's come in and let's take a look at what i have my version of it here and uh let's kill that page in fact so here we are and what i'm going to do first off is we're going to show their version of it first off. So what I did is I just came in here. Well, let me, um, let's do this first. So you see that what I'm doing is the same as what they are doing. So we'll come right there and we find this part here and you see in the code here in the HTML, it says you for underline, of course. And then you come down into the code and you got your text decoration uh, color, which is the color of the underline if i turn that off it turns to black because it's inheriting it from the text itself then we have our background color which you can't see the background color there so um well it doesn't matter because we're only going to look at my examples going forward but you can see as i turn it off it changes slightly you probably won't be able to see that on your computer but let me do this let me find a better example of it up here where we can see this a little bit better we can come in so here is our u and let me increase this on this page size a little bit and i probably scrolled way down where did i lose these guys oops going the wrong direction uh let's see here lost them somewhere there we go all right so now we are back to our element and so you can see here the underline and then the colored background and i will turn off the colored background and again you'll see it's all the way around but also because the the text itself is an inline level element at this point. It's only taking up as much width as is necessary. So there's no padding on the sides of it either. And I didn't much necessarily care for that. So what I'm going to do is show you their version of it first, what it looks like when we do it over here. So I'm going to save this and then we're going to preview that page and I'm getting nothing all of a sudden. Why am I getting nothing here? Let's come back in. What did I turn off? Oh, I turned off. I turned off the code. It's not going to work if you do that. Let's turn this back on. I was turning everything off and shouldn't have done that one. So let's turn it back on. So here we go. And again, let's see if we can increase the size of this so we can see it a little bit better. So here we have it. We have it here. We have it broken at the dollar sign. And then we have um, the blue color around the outside. And let's just come in here. And let's, uh, let's do this. Let's duplicate this line and we'll just kill that one. When you put a slash like that, it creates a syntax code, a uh, syntax error. Um, it doesn't actually, um, it doesn't actually comment the code out. So, um, do it sparingly, but when you're just playing around and testing, it's a quick way to turn things off. So you see here the... There is no padding along the edges here, and you got you know, at least five, six pixels below the bottom here. So what I want to do is I want to create the exact same thing. I want to do the underline, but I want to push the underline down so it's down below the bottom of the the uh, pointy end on the bottom of the underline, whatever you want to call that on there. I guess it would be a serif, technically, probably. Um, so below that, and then I also want to 
bring down the height a little bit and bring up the bottom and I'll show you all that. And then we're actually going to put a little padding on the side as well. So we're going to come back in here. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off each one of these elements again by causing a syntax error, which causes the CSS not to run. So we will then turn this back on. Now, the first thing you have to do is because, like I said, this element is a inline level element when it is turned into a uh, into an underline. So let me show you that in the code. Let's just come down here. We'll click on it. And you can see down here it says display inline. What we want it to say is display inline block because when it's inline, all you could affect is what's on either side of it. You can affect the margin and the padding on the ends. I do believe, I'm pretty sure that's right. But when you go to a block, then it is inline block. It is still in line, but is treated like a block level element. So you can affect the top and bottom as well, whether it be padding or margin. And so we're gonna deal with that. So we did that to inline block. And then we're gonna say here, because what I did is I took this entire element here and I said, uh, make it, let's just highlight that, uh, do a strike through on it instead of doing an underline. And in this case here, I think I could have just used the underline because I was trying to, I was trying to do something different and I never got around to it. But so either way, I think you could just do an underline on here because all I do at this point, well, first off, let's do this. Let's turn it on to display inline block. You won't see it do anything, but we're going to change the text decoration now to underline. So it pushes the underline down below it. And then while we're at it, let's just turn on the color of the underline and let us turn on our text decoration as well. So, well, actually, so the second one I did here, this is the text decoration of the underline itself. And then the first one, or the second one down here at the bottom is the background color. And I'll change that to red in a little bit. Well, actually, let me change it to red right now just so we can see what we got going on while we are changing. And then I've never done this before inside of the editor. Let me see if I can boost up the size here. Yep, sure can, okay. That's good. Wow, look at how big the CSS is now too. Let's push this over to this side. Let's see if we can do it over here. Okay, that'll work. Okay, so now we see exactly what's going on. And um, so now we wanna come in here. So we got our underline. We got our colors turned on in the background so we can see what it's going to look like. And now what we're going to do is we're going to affect the height of this element. And the height will remove uh, spacing from the bottom. So normally you would not set a height on a text element like this, but in this case we will. So let's uh, pop this out of here. And you see there it just moved up just a hair. And I can put it back in and we do that. And let's just, let's just move this down to 40. And we'll see what we get. And you see it moved all the way up like that. Now, in some cases, that might actually be a good effect if you want to just highlight just specifically that region where the text is. And so because now the next line here is line height, and I had that at 48, but let's bring this down to 40 as well. And let's see what happens there. That did nothing. Um, and I see here is going around the bottom like that too. Oh, that's because the underline is there. So it's one of the things you got to kind of play around with it, but the line height will bring it down at the top. The height will bring it up from the bottom. So let's put that back to 51 where I had it. And the line height I actually had turned off on purpose because in this particular instance, I thought it looked okay without bringing the top down at all. And then what I also put in here is we want padding on either side of five pixels. So I said padding of zero, five pixels. So zero would be zero top and bottom. Five pixels would be right and left. And then we're going to do, here are the two little tricky bits. And I'll even turn on the border radius of one pixel that they had. But in this case here, I'm actually going to change this to three pixels because I was wondering how that would look once we get this done. So now what we're going to do is we're going to say text underline offset. And there it's got a sister element. I forget uh, what is called exactly, but it, it defines the offset from where. Uh, but we're going to do here um, offset of, 
uh, five pixels, which is going to push it down five pixels from where it currently is. So we're going to do that and now it pushed it down. And now it's right at the very edge of the red down here at the bottom. And if we were to take this down to 50, you can see here it pulls it up a little bit. And in fact, I think I'm going to leave it like that where it's up just one pixel from the bottom of the underline right there. And in fact, if you can't see the underline, let me just change that to black so you can see what it looks like. Okay, so now you can see the underline a little bit better there. And now the only other thing we're going to do is we're going to change the thickness of that uh, underline as well. And so that's text decoration thickness. Now it got a little bit bigger. And so now it's like, mm, okay, we probably don't want that. We probably actually want to beef this back up a little bit. 52. No, that must have been why I had it at 51. So right there, it kind of splits through that red at the bottom. And so that's it. It takes a few lines of CSS, but ultimately I think this looks much better. And in fact, what I will do is I will turn the colors back to the way they should be. And let me see here. I need this uh, background color. Let's move this over. So I need to change this background color back. Copy that background color. And then the text decoration color. Do that. And put that in there. Okay, now we're ready to save. We will come back in. We will reload the page. And so here we go. So there is the ClickFunnels version of this. And now this is my version down here at the bottom. And I don't know about you, I think it looks a lot better. And what I had been working on was to actually remove the underline completely from the dollar sign. And then that way we could actually move this up, the underline up a little bit more in line with the bottom of the dollar sign. But I was having trouble. I was trying to use a pseudo element of first letter and I couldn't get it to quite work. And so I said, oh, well, I can work on that some other time. So that's what I wanted to show you today. So we went from what they had over here. Uh, which, I mean, it looks good. It's a nice effect and everything. But I think uh, just spending a little bit of time putting in some CSS in there because they have, oh, there's, there's a whole bunch of instances of this on the page. Um, let me see here, command zero. Oops, I got to click on the page first, don't I? Uh, do that. Now we're here. So we got an instance here, which you can't hardly see because the background color is so close to it. This, okay, that's an image. Um, but I know there's at least a couple more. So here's one and here's one and here's one and here's one. And so, and another one. So they have them all over this page. So what they did is they set it in the CSS one time and they said, whenever we do an underline, apply this effect to it across everything on the page. And therefore you, that's, that's what we're getting on all of these here. Some of them they may have done a little bit more custom on. I haven't actually looked at the CSS in here. So that is it. That's uh, their version and my version. And I think mine looks a little bit nicer. So as always, if you have any questions, just let me know.